YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name's Roger. I own a company called QBO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also some content for this channel. Today's video is something that you 2011 guys have been waiting for. Uh, we are going to be looking at the features of both the Safariland ALS RDS 2011 duty holster and the new Blackhawk T-Series 2011 duty holsters. Uh, I'm making this video so you guys out there that need level two or level three retention holsters can get the information as I have found it very confusing for a lot of people out there. So without further ado, let's get this review started. So as always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Earlier this year, Safariland and Blackhawk announced that they would be adding the Staccato 2011 models to their holster lineup. As you are all aware, 2011s have been becoming quite popular with not only the Staccato lineup, but other manufacturers such as Triarch Systems, Nighthawk Customs, and Bull Armory, just to name a few. Anyway, when both Safariland and Blackhawk made the holsters available for purchase, I hopped onto both their websites, I entered my credit card information, I agreed to their lead times, and then I waited patiently until they arrived. A couple months later, both holsters arrived and I started getting some reps in with each of them. So now after having both of the holsters for a few months, I've put together all of the information that I think most of you will want to know before picking one of these up. Now guys, I typically don't like to do comparison videos as I think just because I like something doesn't mean that everyone else will or vice versa. Um, I like to make videos that give an overview of products that I like on the market and why I like them. Um, if that resonates with you and it leads you to buy said product, that's great. If the content I make about a product isn't something that you're interested in and deters you from buying the product, also great. With that being said, I'm going to go over what I like and what I don't like about each one of these holsters. However, I will preface this by saying that both holsters are great and I would have no problem running either one of them for duty use if I was still on patrol in a law enforcement capacity. It's honestly the model of 2011 and the model of the weapon light that you choose that will dictate which holster you'll need to go with. Um, this will make more sense later in the video. All right, so if you are not familiar with Safariland, they make a duty style retention holster that utilizes their active locking system or ALS for short. This particular model we are showing you is their level one retention holster that uses ALS and is equipped for a red dot sight, making it the model 6395 RDS ALS for a Staccato P Duo 4.4 inch model 2011. I use Safariland SLS and ALS holsters during my entire law enforcement career, as well as in the private sector, and I think they are 100% a great way to go when needing a holster with active retention devices that have to be defeated in order to acquire the weapon. You can also get their level three version of this holster, which incorporates a self-locking system or SLS hood for even more retention. Again, more on this later as well. So what's really nice about the 6395 RDS ALS holster is that you get secure active retention. However, you still get the same draw speed as a normal friction retention holster. You see Safariland placed the ALS thumb release in a place that is natural and intuitive, especially for 2011 shooters. When acquiring your grip on the gun, your thumb typically goes to engage the thumb safety on the gun, which also happens to be right where the ALS thumb release is. This makes for a smooth and fast draw with a very small learning curve if you're new to this style of holster. Another great feature about this holster is that it can run a variety of weapon lights since the retention point is on the ejection port slash chamber area. We'll show you that here with the Surefire X300 Ultra, the new Enforce Wild 2, the Streamlight TLR9, and the Streamlight TLR1HL. Safari Land uses a large sight channel so that you're able to get a variety of weapon lights into the holster without having to get a new holster. Pair this holster with their quick locking system or QLS and you now have a holster that can be securely mounted to your belt and can also come off easily to use the same belt setup for other holsters or firearms. One point two six, one point two six. Got it. In the X here. One three three. One point three three. Got it. In the X here as well. Stand by. So. 1.25, 1.25. Let me focus, got it. And this will be the nine ring here. 
All right, now let's move on to the new guy on the block, the Blackhawk T-Series L2 and L3 duty holsters. Before we get into the breakdown, I will say this. Blackhawk has created what I think is the first major contender on the market, other than Safari Land, in regards to a duty holster in a long time. I'm talking like decades, guys. Um, I've always used and trusted Safari Land for duty use because it's what I found to be the most reliable, durable, and easy to use. I'm happy to say that the new T-Series duty holsters from Blackhawk are definitely hitting all those check boxes as well. The retention device is easily accessed when you acquire your grip around the handle of the gun. The release paddle is squeezed by your thumb, pressing it naturally in towards the gun, which releases the lever, pressed against the Surefire X300 Ultra Weapon Light, and allows you to draw the weapon freely. This too provides you with a smooth, consistent, and fast draw stroke. The T-Series holsters are also made to accommodate red dot sights and provide protection for the optic with a protective covering. An additional feature of the T-Series holster is the option to add a leg strap connector. This is great for keeping the holster close to the body when having it dropped and offset. You can do the same thing with Safari Land holsters, you just have to pin the leg strap between the belt adapter and the holster. It's not as aesthetically pleasing, but does function the same. Okay, now let's go over some of the things that I don't like about each holster and why you might have to choose one over the other. Right off the bat, Safari Land doesn't make it for any length longer than the 4.4 inch Takato P Duo. Why is this an issue, you might ask? What if you wanted to run, say, the Staccato XC, which has a five inch barrel? You can't because the slide length is cut short and plugged at 4.4 inches in the Safari Line holster. Some might say, well, it's a different design and can't be done, and I'd accept that answer if I wasn't a holster manufacturer myself, and if I didn't already own a five inch Safari Land ALS holster for a Staccato P with the five inch barrel. They already make this. They already make this style of holster just without the red dot. So I can't for the life of me understand why they don't add the longer lengths to the lineup considering how many other 2011 companies make five inch government length models. They already do this with the Glock 34 variant of this holster. You see, I can run my RDS ALS Glock 34 holster and have a Glock 19, a Glock 17, and a Glock 34 all fit the same holster because the holster is made to the five inch length of the 34 barrel. So yeah, to me, that's frustrating. So say you're one of the lucky guys out there and you get to run a Triarch Tri-11 five inch government model. Well, you're gonna have to run the Blackhawk T-Series holster because they are the only duty holster on the market with intuitive active retention devices that accommodate 2011s with five inch barrels. Now say you carry a Staccato P Duo 4.4 inch model and your department issues a weapon light that has to be used. Um, let's say that happens to be the Streamlight TLR1 HL, okay? So now you're going to have to run the Safari Land 6395 RDS ALS because the Black Hawk T-Series duty holster only works with Surefire X300 Ultras and X400 weapon lights. Blackhawk's T-Series appears to have their retention based on the notch above the weapon light controls. Therefore, the Surefire X300 and X400 lights have to be used when running their holsters. Okay, now for some other things I have noticed when using both holsters. Uh, if you are someone who really wants a level three holster or maybe you work for a department that mandates level three, uh, I would check out the Blackhawk T-Series L3. The thumb activator retention device defeats both the hood and internal retention devices grabbing onto the Surefire weapon light. Um, this is nice because you get the added retention but the same ease of draw as the L2. The level three Safari Land RDS ALS SLS holster, man, that's a mouthful. That's what she said. <laughs> Uh, it uses a strap that has to be pressed forward before releasing the ALS thumb lever to get the gun free. Uh, I know it sounds like a lot of moving parts, and I'm not trying to say that you can't be just as fast with some practice. I'm just saying that it's not as easy to use as the Black Hawk Level 3 retention holster. So I also happen to have a Level 3 Safari Land ALS SLS holster from my old duty rig, so I brought it out to the range to see if I could get a couple of smooth and consistent draws for time. One, two, seven. Got it. Broke it low and right in the eight here. So 1.15. Let me see. Got it. Right here in the 10 ring. Let's go again. Pick up there, one, four, five, and high right in the seven. Uh, I don't see it. Got it. 
So I don't have a level three ALS RDS for the 2011 series, the Toscados uh, from Safari Land. So I did bring out my old school duty holster. Um, you can see the basket weave from patrol days, but anyway, hood. So the SLS and then also the ALS lever. So you have two retention devices, a hood that you have to push forward and then a lever you have to rock to the rear to release the firearm. Um, obviously more steps are gonna mean more time. Um, doesn't mean that you can't get proficient with it and become sub-second with this. Um, a couple things that I would change on this belt setup, this is really old, that's what I used to use. Uh, I would definitely want this dropped and offset. Having it so high, we had it this high because we had to be in patrol vehicles a lot, and having it dropped and offset would hit, especially if you were the driver, you'd hit the uh, center console a lot, so a lot of us moved them up higher. But now, if I was back on patrol, I would just deal with it and have it lower because having to reach so high up here just doesn't feel very natural. And it's uh, some waste movement, causes you more time on the draw. As you can see from the other drop sets, we were able to do 115s and 125s way more consistently, even sub seconds consistently uh, with those setups. But um, still a viable option, guys. But I did want to showcase this. Uh, so I know a few people have asked, like, what's the difference between the level three, level two, SLS, ALS, all the different acronyms. We'll go over all that stuff. But uh, I did, this is the only one that I have that is a level three um, from Safari Land. So, uh, and it'll tie into what I'm talking about versus the level three um, from Black Hawk on their T series. So, anyway, um, that'll do it for the range portion. We're going to head back to the studio. Another thing about the Black Hawk holster is the way that the thumb release is designed. Um, it's an inward squeezing motion versus a thumb pressing forward motion like the Safari Land ALS. With a 2011, the thumb of your strong hand is placed on top of the safety to disengage it. And that's also typically where your thumb will rest when acquiring your firing grip. With the way that the T-Series holster is designed, your thumb has to first uh, make a squeezing motion and then come up to make a forward motion to disengage the safety on your gun. Again, this can be accomplished smoothly and quickly with practice. However, it's not as easy as the ALS thumb lever on the Safari Line Level 1 ALS RDS holster. The last thing I want to mention is that with both holsters, I noticed that sometimes the hood covering for the red dot sight um, would sometimes come down and prevent me from reholstering smoothly, like it would get in the way of my red dot. Um, it's not a huge issue, as in both cases, you just nudge it forward with the end of your slide, and then you can reholster. But I did find it to become annoying with both holsters while out on the range. Oh. And neither holster allows for the use of the new Trigicon SRL red dot, uh, which is a real bummer for me as I really do like that optic. I know, I know it's not rated for duty use, but I dropped the hell out of mine during a match and it surprisingly held up. Um, there's also that new BROS shield from Jaeger Works that we have. And if it's not for duty use, why does the SRL have night vision settings? Asking for a friend. Okay, so now let's go back to the discussion about draw speed. Um, while out on the range, I ran both holsters while using a shot timer to see what draw speeds were like. Uh, I'm happy to say that both allowed me to perform to the best of my abilities, and I was even able to score a couple of sub-second draws with each. So here's that footage. We'll do sub-second on a level three Blackhawk T-Series standby. <sighs> That was a 0 .96, 0 .96 on the level three. Got it. It is fully capable of doing sub-second draws in the 10 ring. So yeah, uh, on the level three tier series from Blackhawk, um, it's nice because the retention device, I'm sure I'm gonna talk about this in the talking points, but the thumb lever retention device does both the hood and where it grabs onto on the uh, light, uh, the light channel slash trigger guard area. Um, where their where their retention is, um, but you can see with this ten ring hit getting a 0.96, you can do it. Uh, I'm more likely to get like the 110s, the one the one tens, the 1.15s, 1.15s would be probably where I'm more consistent at. Um, but what is nice is that you're only having to hit one lever here to activate both retention devices for a level three. So Let's see what we can get for sub second here on the Safari Land. Uh, this will be a ALS RDS level two, so no hood. Just the uh, thumb release on the ALS. Stand by. That is a 0 .97, 0 .97 in the nine ring right here. 
So guys, uh, as I'm sure I've talked about this in the video, uh, in the studio portion, uh, I've carried Safari Land my entire law enforcement career, and then even went in the private sector. Um, to me, it's like the only holster that I've trusted over all these years for duty use. Um, ALS is awesome, but when they brought out with the RDS and having this as well as a, a way to protect your optic, I also thought it was a great idea. Um, so it's just natural. I'm gonna go over it in the studio portion when I can break it down and get closer to showing you the mechanisms, but um, very easy to get sub-second draws with this as well um, with practice and repetition. Again, like the 115s, the 125s is probably where I would be at on a normal day, but getting warmed up and pushing it, we can get those sub-second draws, so. Well guys, that's going to do it for our review of both the Safari Land 6395 RDS ALS and the Blackhawk T-Series L2 and L3 holsters for the 2011 Staccato lineup. For those that message me and email me all the time asking me which gun or which holster I like better, I hope this video shows you why I can't just give you a definitive answer as there are so many other variables that come into play in regards to my choice. Um, these variables may not apply to you as they do to me and that is why I tell everyone to research all the aspects of the product that you're looking into instead of just asking someone, if you could only have one, which would it be? Um, as you saw in this video guys, depending on which staccato you have, which optic you have, and which weapon light you have, you may have to use one holster over the other because the other one just doesn't permit you to use it. So that's my answer to that. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and it helps some of you guys out there that I've gotten a lot of questions and emails about the holster configurations. Um, if you did like the video, please give us a thumbs up down below because that does help us out. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because we post new videos every week. If you really wanna support our content, check out that Patreon link down below. Uh, Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, discounts, and giveaways. They are a big reason why we continue to create the content for you guys. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Level two or level three retention holsters, and uh, what the f am I trying to say? I'm making this video so you, so you guys out there can get the information. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, here we go again. Anyway, when both Safari Land and Blackhawk, Blackhawk, it's so hard to say. <clears throat> I know what you're thinking. I think just because I like something doesn't mean that everyone else will or vice versa. Um, I like to make new videos. Why? We make new videos every week. That's what popped into my head. Oh, is that really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For duty use, if I was still on a patrol, if I was still on patrol, oh Jesus Christ. Uh, uses a strap that has to be pressed forward before releasing the ALS thumb leffer. Leffer? What the f is a leffer? Oh my God, man. Holster is designed, your thumb has to first make squeezing motions. Uh, make squeezing motions, Jesus Christ. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. Really, dog. There's your blooper. From Jaegerworks, and I got a question. If it's not for duty use, oh, why did I say I have a question? Why can't I just stick to the script? Why can't I just stick to the script? Okay, now let's go back to the discussion about draw speed. Uh, draw, draw speed.